Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to uh, spend about 40 minutes or so talking about the nuclear weapons program. I'll get right to the bottom line. And I want to emphasize that nuclear weapons are serious business. Uh, let's talk about our role in this. What's Los Alamos do in the nuclear weapons program? We're responsible, this laboratory is responsible for most of the nuclear weapons by far, biggest fraction of nuclear weapons in America's nuclear arsenal. I'll show you what they are. The W76 warhead is the backbone of America's strategic nuclear deterrent. There are lots of these things out there. They are out there right now uh, on submarines. Uh, submarines moving very quietly. We don't know where they are. The bad guys don't know where they are. 30 minutes, however, and they can deliver this type of weapon to just about any target on Earth. Okay? So the moral of that story is don't mess with the United States. You think Texas is bad? Try a Trident submarine. <laughs> W88 is America's hard target killer. Uh, there are targets which are incredibly tough to destroy. There are you know, jillions of feet of concrete and this, that, and the reinforced steel and whatnot. Uh, and a hundred, you might think, you know, gee, look what 20 kiloton, you know, can anything survive that? Yeah. Actually, some things can survive that. They were designed to survive that. Maybe not if you put it right down you know, with, with zero error and you lay it right down there. Uh, but some things can survive a near miss. So the, the principle of deterrence is to say, you may be able to run, but you can't hide. Uh, so we can put a W88 to very high precision. It's a high yield weapon on a target. And the bad guys know, ought to know, that their hard targets will not survive a weapon of this type. That's, that's the theory of deterrence. Don't try anything stupid because we'll get you. Doesn't matter how much destruction you cause in the United States. Your country is going to go away if you try something dumb. There are some targets that the W88 can't get. And for that, we have the B61, in particular the B6111. Uh, the B61 is a bomb. Uh, now, the code is, I'm not giving away anything secret here, W's mean warheads, they fly on missiles. Bomb, B's mean bombs, they fall out of airplanes. Okay, got that. B61 uh, has a, uh, a number of different modifications so that it can address both tactical missions and strategic missions. The strategic missions tend to be higher yield. Uh, and there is also the B-6111, uh, which is intended to be dropped from a B-2 bomber. Uh, it burrows a little bit uh, in the earth. The energy coupling is better. And you can, in the language of the trade, you can address targets that are much too hard uh, to take out by an air burst or even a surface burst. W-80 cruise missile. Uh, the W-80 warhead is carried on three different types of cruise missiles. Uh, it has the advantage that it provides a standoff capability for our bombers. That is, they don't have to, unlike the B-61 where you have to fly over the target and drop it, you might imagine that this would, would be difficult in some environments. If you've had the opportunity to look at a Russian air defense map, uh, they defend their, uh, what they view as their principal assets very, very well. Uh, but uh, cruise missile gives you the opportunity to have the bomber off the coast, uh, launch the missile. Some of them are stealthy, and they fly along and look at this and that, and they get to their target with considerable accuracy. It's the same kind of cruise missile technology that we've used in the, uh, in the Gulf and also in, uh, in Yugoslavia. And then finally, the uh, W-78 warhead uh, on the intercontinental ballistic missile, Minuteman III uh, intercontinental uh, ballistic missile. These are based in silos. Uh, they're very well uh, protected, you know, with the big silo doors. You've probably seen movies of that. And the W-78 is our uh, contribution. There are three of them on top of the Minuteman III missile. Uh, there are treaties which are in the process of being considered by different country, countries, us and Russia. Uh, very complicated treaties that would take that down to a single warhead per missile. Uh, but right now, you can put three of them, and they can go to uh, three targets and uh, significant destruction from that. That's what we're responsible for. Now, 
they're intended uh, to prevent other countries, other states, other national entities from doing something that, that really is in our, in our national interest. You get people's attention when you, uh, when you threaten the existence of their nation. If you want weapons to last forever, uh, that's aging. Aging is materials. And you worry about, gee, how long does high explosive last? And how long does that mounting bracket last? And will this weld break over time? And one might say, well, why worry about that? Just take it in and change it out. You know, every 10 years or so, other countries do that. Are we going to be able to do this job without nuclear testing? We think so, and we told the president that. Might be wrong, in which case the president said, because it's the supreme national interest, even if we sign the treaty, treaty and the Senate stamps it on, the, you know, put ribbons or whatever they do to it when they ratify a treaty, do all that stuff. If it's in our supreme national interest, we can withdraw from that and do a nuclear test should the country require it. You know, that's, that's sort of the ante uh, of national security. Now, uh, Los Alamos weapons provide the ultimate defense of our nation and an umbrella over our allies around the globe. Let no one doubt that the United States does indeed have the capability to project overwhelming force in the defense of our national interest. Such a mistake would be fatal and it will only be made once. Sometimes we forget how important the work that we do, do is. Uh, we have a, a critical role in history. And you think, gee, you know, that's sort of overstating. It's not. We defend freedom on this planet. The United States, for whatever warts and imperfections we have, we try real hard to be the good guys. We try to help other countries. We're a very generous country. So a strong defense is absolutely critical, not just for the United States, but for this country to accept the role that has been thrust upon us by history. And we didn't seek to have a major empire. We didn't seek to be the most powerful country on the planet. It sort of happened to us because other countries got into wars and they had problems. And then suddenly the United States in this century is the most powerful economy in the world, the most powerful defense establishment uh, in the world. But what we do here is provide that bedrock, that technical bedrock, that the president can use to go forward and confidently negotiate treaties, that the Senate can use when they consider the ratification of those treaties. Now, uh, Los Alamos has a duty to the nation to maintain this capability for as long as our government uh, asks us to. So that's what I wanted to say. That's what we do here at Los Alamos. I'm proud of the work we do, and I'm proud of the people doing it. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>